Hey guys, welcome back to the Mind Muscle Connection. I'm Joe Klimzeski with Tyler Weeb, and this week we're going to talk about assertiveness. And uh, Tyler, you and I, when when you were here in Evansville, we were kind of compiling a list of all the potential topics we were going to launch into this podcast with, and and one of them was, you know, how do you actually just kind of kind of bridge that gap between when you have values that you really want to align with it. And, and for us, that may mean you're in contest prep and your, your diet is right on point. And then you go to somebody's house or you're out with friends and everybody wants you to eat pizza, drink beer, do something. And, and you got to be the one to say no or something else. Maybe you're on a family vacation. It's like, man, I really have to get this work out of, you know, please just, just watch the kids for a minute and, and let me go get this work out of. And I mean, sometimes it's tough to, to have these goals and these values that mean so much to you. And of course, you are just part of other people's lives. We all have these autonomous sections of our lives that we have to fit together like a puzzle. So, uh, you know, just, just truth be told, uh, about two or three hours ago, I did a Flexible Dieting Institute research review where I covered a study on the science of assertiveness. So I, I feel like I've got some, some, some pretty unique information to, to bring up to our, our viewers and listeners, but you know, you've lived this. this, this has been part of your life and, and you coach a lot of clients in this. So, so how do you try to advise people to, to manage this balancing act? It's hard. It's, it's really one of the hardest things because you fully understand where that person is coming from. Like you get wanting to go have fun and enjoy yourself and maybe put the fitness part of yourself to the side sometimes. And then you get the other side though of, well, you know, we do need to be careful because we have X goal. And it's funny that this topic is what we're talking about this week is because I've actually just recently had this conversation with a couple of clients where there were friends and family that were getting on them for living a different lifestyle. They were told one client in particular that they weren't fun anymore to hang out with mm. because they weren't drinking. And I've lost my drinking buddy is what they were, you know, they were told by a family member. Now I know not everyone is going to be in that exact types of situation, but having that discussion with that person was, we have to realize that when people are telling us this, we're at a Christmas dinner and they're like, oh, are you allowed to eat this? Or, or why are you eating like that? We have to realize that these people are coming from a place of insecurity, right? They are putting their own securities on top of us because maybe they haven't had the success that they've wanted in the past, or maybe they're insecure with the way they handle their health and they see someone going against the herd, right? Dinner, you know, everyone's drinking, everyone's eating, stuffing their face, you know, wearing the sweatpants and the stretchy pants. And you're the one person in your medium shirt, right? Like just, you know, biceps popping and, and you're maybe not indulging and it can be a little awkward. And so the way I like to talk to someone about this is we need to realize where we are at in our journey. Okay. Cause there are going to be different phases where the seriousness with which you are going to have to uh, have with your food intake is going to change. And so if you're someone in a prep, if you are someone dieting, trying to drop 20 pounds, you know what? Unfortunately, you are just going to have to sacrifice something along the line for that goal. And so I think it's a great opportunity to just have that discussion with yourself. How important is this goal to me? Okay. I think that will tell you a lot about how you're going to handle this. And then it also gives you a potential opportunity to talk to the other people about your goals as well, which I think is pretty important because on one hand, yes, it is not our responsibility to have people understand what we're trying to do. If you have a goal, you know, that's your goal. You don't have to make someone understand it, but it is still, I think, a great opportunity to explain what you're doing and why you're doing it to that person. Because a lot of times it's just some miscommunication. We are just like to assume things about other people that are usually never true. We don't necessarily fill that gap with trust. We just assume that they're doing it for X reason against us or what have you. And so to, I think then to be able to have that kind of open discussion of, 
yes, maybe I'm being super serious right now, but that doesn't mean that I'm like this all of the time. I do have that balance within my life. And so it, it really can just foster that discussion. And in all honesty, I, I think that's probably the best way you can go about it is just be open and just be like, yeah, like, I wish I could be doing this. Don't get me wrong. It's not like sometimes I want to sacrifice this, but I have this goal and it's about reaching this goal and those sacrifices. So it is honestly one of the toughest things that you're going to probably go through, you know, along this journey, just in terms of it affecting other people and how they react to you. But again, you know, if it's something that is really, really important to you, you can't let it bother you or really derail you too much. Well, I think you covered it all. That's the end of our podcast guys. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so what you started with was, was brilliant in that, uh, you, you said you, you, you have to have this conversation with yourself. What are my goals and so forth? And then you moved over to and, and have this conversation with them. And you also said uh, a lot of times these people are acting this way toward you, knowing full well that you have this goal because of their own insecurities. And, and I would say, yes, that that is a type of person. And, and you have to deal with that type of person in a specific way. But other people truly just want you to have fun. Like they're like, oh man, let's, you, you are my drinking buddy. Come on, a couple slices of pizza, one pitcher of beer won't hurt you. Come on, let's go let's have some fun. And they, they almost see themselves as liberating you or rescuing you for at least an evening from this, you know, drudgery. And so, you know, on either side, you, you know, you, you definitely put the period at the end of the sentence, which is it, it's going to take communication at some point. And if not, like, like, let's say you're the person who just keeps taking it and you kind of joke it off or put your head down. People will keep doing that because they think they have a shot at convincing you for either their own malice or, you know, just for, for your own enjoyment. They, they, they think they have a shot. But at some point, just like if you had a massive, you know, food allergy that's going to, you know, put you into systemic shock, or if you if you had diabetes or something, you had a certain diet, you know, nobody would push you into something they know that's going to hurt you. So, so to to have a conversation in the right way, and it could go like this: it could be like, man, you know, I, I really appreciate it. I'll always always start with some kind of affirmation and say, man, I I know you're you're just trying to have fun and it's great, and and I, I promise you, like as soon as I'm done with this prep, like you know, we can go out and have fun. Or maybe you say, I just, I just don't really like that anymore. I'm, I'm really working on my health and, and, I, and I appreciate you, you know, being who you are and, and trying to encourage me, but this is important to me and, and, and let's, let's have fun. Like, I don't need to do this to have this fun with you. And once you do have that conversation, but it takes a, a very strategic and precise level of assertiveness uh, it's, it's just going to keep happening. But as soon as people know that's who you are and that's what you do, you will find that instead of them prodding you every time, they will start protecting you. They'll be the ones that will shield you from other people. Like, well, I, I know you don't like to do that, so let's do this instead. And all of a sudden, you now have an ally where you used to have somebody who just kind of instigated things at, at every moment. Yeah, because like in all honesty, for most of us, this can be a pretty lonely journey. You know, this person I was talking to, and I mean myself included, we're the only people in our lives that are really living a fit lifestyle where you know we are tracking our food, we are training on a regular basis. And so it can be a very lonely thing where maybe you do feel like you're missing out on stuff because you know you're not like everyone else in that sense of every single weekend, it's go out time, right? And so again, you know, coming back to that communication aspect, you, you said it like amazingly, you can get that ally on your side, even if they still don't live that lifestyle, at least now you do have that one person on your side, your friend, your spouse, you know, who, whomever it may be. And it can make this journey maybe a lot less lonely and a little bit easier. Um, you know, fortunately for me, like I've got a great group of friends, you know, a great support system where, you know, I've been through prep a few times and I'll disappear for a few months. You just get to a certain point where it's like, you know what, going out just isn't worth it anymore. Like just putting myself around that temptation and they understand, they know it's a short period of time and that, Hey, fun time, Tyler's going to be back in three months. Like it's okay. And so I think 
because it's a very hard sport to understand. Oh, you're purposefully starving yourself for six months. Like what? what? Like, and so it, it can be very hard for people to understand that and what you're doing and why you're doing it. And so we just keep coming back to the importance of communication, communication, explain what you're doing, why you're doing, let them see that you still can come out and enjoy yourself without doing all of that other stuff. That is something that I purposely will do typically at, you know, my first 10 weeks of a prep, I will still go out. If there's something going on, I'll bring my own food. I won't really be drinking, but I'm still out there. I'm still with my friends and I'm still having a good time. I'm not sitting in the corner, you know, Mr. Loner. And so, you know, it is important that we're able to kind of go, Hey, look, I can still do both of these. I'm still the same person. I'm not changing who I am. I'm still a good friend but I'm just changing what I do for a short period of time. And I think if you truly do have a good support group around you and good friends, like true friends, they're going to understand that, right? They're going to be okay with you going for a goal. They should be. And if they're not, and if they continue to push you and prod you, then it might be time to find a different group. Hmm. Well, you, you interestingly went again to what's happening internally in your mind and then what, what is happening socially with relationships. And I, I like that you said there are parts of a prep where you have some delineated pre-made decisions for this many weeks. You know, I'm okay. I can still go out and have some fun. Eventually, I kind of need to stay on my game and I need to be focused and I may avoid that. So, so those are some things you have already thought out. And, and, and that takes some conscious effort and some decision making. But it is also part of you deciding, you know, who you trust yourself to be, who you want to be. There are some people who like to cloak themselves in that victim or martyr status, like, oh, I can't do that because I'm I'm just suffering in silence over here for my contest, and you know, I'm I'm too serious to go out there and do that with you guys, uh, and 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 you you almost stiff arm people away from you. Like you, you, you intentionally want to be different and, and be known for that. Other people do quite the opposite. You, you want to stay in the flow as much as you can and, and make this not such a gear grinding mechanism between you and friends. And, you know, as the guy who brought the world flexible dieting, uh, I, I think it is imperative to us to decide like we can still be flexible. We can still go out. And, and there are some people who would say, okay, look, you know, uh, uh, an ounce and a half of tequila has about 86 or 76, you know, calories. So maybe I can fit that in once a week or something for the first, like you said, eight or 10 weeks. Maybe not. I mean, maybe you just don't want that, but, but you get to make that decision. And then one of the things I want to discuss is some of the research I covered today in this research review is that there, uh, social psychology and just personal development does have a differentiation between assertive people and non-assertive people. And it used to be decades ago, clinicians, psychologists would look at non-assertive people as having a deficit. We need to teach you to be assertive. Well, if you're naturally an introvert, there's nothing wrong with being quiet and deferential to other people, but there is a time where you do have to be able to assert yourself. You can't let people walk on you. And what this one study found, which was interesting, is when introverts who would normally not assert themselves in, in even this kind of a social situation, when they practiced, when they acted it out, when, when you set up a scenario in an environment with actors and you were given, given a, a, a context and saying, okay, here's what's going to happen, act assertive. Even though you're not, just act that way. How would, how would you act if you were assertive? And they would do this. And then when they were ready, they would have evaluators at this one particular study and uh and the evaluators couldn't tell the difference necessarily between assertive people and people pretending to be assertive and and that gives people confidence it's like wow i i really can be nice and and i can i can tell my friends this in, in a way that advocates for myself and nothing bad happened they they all still like me and we had fun and and you know i, I they just respected and, and this is key tyler when you do this for yourself in the right way, people respect you more. They really do. Like they, they know your values, they know your principles, and they gain more confidence in your confidence about yourself. Who would have thought we make things worse out in our mind than they actually are? <laughs> I never would have guessed that, that we do that, right? But yeah, it's, 
it is such like a, a, an interesting thing. And I mean, I think no matter what, you're going to get weird looks, right? Like it, it's going to happen at some point and you're just not going to convince everyone, right? You're just not every single person is going to understand you. And I think we have to be able to, you know, take it to a certain point and, you know, just have it within your social group of that communication of that assert assertiveness that you mentioned of uh, that just when it comes down to it, like you said, self-respect and is this goal something that is, you know, that important to you that, that you are willing to have that discussion and you are willing to make those sacrifices because, if the answer is no, well, then maybe you shouldn't be doing it. Maybe you're just not quite ready, you know, for that type of journey. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's probably one of the most important things to determine before you jump into something like a contest prep is, you know, is my life in order? <laughs> Am I ready for something like this? And yeah, it's just, it's going to be something that's always going to crop up, you know, no matter what. And, you know, just having that tool of communication and then you know, some of that self-confidence, even if you are an introvert to, you know, to be able to put your foot down and, and you know, state that, hey, no, nope, I'm not going to be like that right now it is going to be so vital to your journey. And I think it's going to allow you to, you know, grow as a human being as well, because then you're able to have that confidence of, oh, like I had that discussion, nothing went wrong. What would happen if I was more assertive in other areas of my life? And so you just continue to have this, this, uh, this personal growth as you go along. Um, and again, you know, if you do a contest prep, right, and you enjoy it, chances are you're going to be doing it again. And so I think just to be able to set yourself up for future success, having that type of communication right off the bat is key. And I'll end us today, Tyler, with, with one of your previous comments again, in that you said you can be a good role model for people. You know, you can you can do it in such a way that it inspires people. And it's going to go one way or the other. You're, you're going to be the person who, who creates or at least inflames that friction. You just don't handle it well. And now you've got some contentiousness between you and friends or you, you invite people in and, and because you're handling it so well, they actually ask some questions and pretty soon they may start making different decisions based on seeing you because they're, they're seeing you still involve yourself in all the fun parts of life and in what matters most in these contexts. And yet you're not doing it with any, any self-destructive behavior. And, and again, I, I mean, that is, that is truly on us and, and, and will completely hinge on how we handle those moments. Couldn't have said it better myself. All right, man. Well, guys uh, you, you, who are watching and listening, thanks so much. This is the Mind Muscle Connection podcast. Joe Klimczewski, Tyler Weeb. We will see you next time as we continue to explore the topics uh, in, in a deeply personal way, the, the, the kind of growth and development, as Tyler mentioned, that we want for ourselves, we, we hope you want for yourself. We're going to keep bringing these up always in the context of people who are aggressively pursuing life goals specifically from our perspective as, as nutrition and, and fitness and performance coaches. So we hope you're enjoying it. We'll see you next time in the Mind Muscle Connection.